on behalf of Steel Memorial Library, the Mount Olive Historical Society, and the Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce, I'd like to welcome you to our downtown historical walk. Ms. Karen Moore, the president of the Mount Olive Historical Society, is going to be guiding us today, and I'm going to let her take it from here. Hope you enjoy. In 1853, the U.S. government made this site a postal stop, so it became necessary for the village to be named. Tradition says that Benjamin Oliver, a mercantile and a Duplin County plantation owner, named Mount Olive after the biblical Mount of Olives. This seems reasonable as he was a devout Christian and his father was a Baptist minister. The town was incorporated March 1st, 1870 and 2020 was our 150th anniversary or our sesquicentennial. We're standing at the train depot. Mount Olive has had two train depots. The first one dating from the 1830s. It was burned in 1862 by a Union soldier. And this one. This one was built in 1910 and has retained a lot of its original character. The railroad donated the building in 1983 and it was moved to this location and used as our civic center. The depot was originally located at the corner of College and Center Streets. Legend says the train passengers asked locals about the mount and the olives. The locals would look across the tracks and said that a mount stood behind a stand of pine trees. Then they would look on the other side of the tracks and identified a small oak as an olive tree. The passengers would be satisfied and go on their way. Our first post office was opened in 1853 in Dr. Gideon Roberts' apothecary shop. It then moved from commercial building to commercial building until it finally landed here. This building was built between 1931 and 1933 as a New Deal WPA project and was used as our post office until 1993. It's been described as one of Mount Olive's most sophisticated buildings. The ionic columns are made of limestone brought from Indiana. It's also one of four buildings we have in town on the Register of Historic Places. In the 1960s, during tensions with the Soviet Union, the basement was the town's fallout shelter. The building was bought in 1995, rehabilitated, and became the Rice and Edwards Law Firm. The Shine Sutherland Burnett House. This house is also on the National Register of Historic Places. It's a classical revival built in 1874 by Joseph Shine. In 1919, Benjamin Sutherland inherited this beautiful home and he remodeled it in 1924, adding the Doric portico and deep eaves. Charles and Esther Hatch Burnett bought the house in 1937 and raised their family here. The current owner is Charles Turner. Welcome to what has been described as one of the most Gothic of all Mount Olive churches. We're standing in front of the historic First Baptist Church. The church itself was organized in 1863, making this the oldest church in town. When a group of Baptists moved their membership from the Thunder Swamp Baptist Church to Mount Olive, a wooden church was erected on West College Street, and in 1869, 20 more members joined, this time from the Bear Marsh Baptist Church. In 1875, the church moved to this location. The lot was given by Mr. and Mrs. Oliver Summerlin. The building was dedicated in 1912. We're standing at the location of one of the handsomest hotels in Eastern North Carolina. It had multiple front gables and gable dormers, contrasting wood shingle weatherboard and a paneled sheathings, lacy sewn ornament and a beautiful wraparound veranda. It was built by Cullen Blackman Hatch, who was a merchant here in Mount Olive. For a few years, it was also the home of the Hatch family. In 1907, he sold the hotel to Benjamin Sutherland you may remember that name from our visit to the Shine Sutherland House. 
1948, the hotel was demolished and in 1949 was replaced with the Henderson Crumpler Clinic. The clinic operated until 1976 and this building is the actual clinic. This is the English and Oliver building that dates to 1900. It was built by W. Frank English as a produce brokerage. Mr. English was a pioneer food and produce broker as early as 1895. In 1904, Council Wooten Oliver became a partner and the firm was English and Oliver until 1958. For years, E.N. Ricks operated a fertilizer and coal business upstairs. In the 1950s, Mrs. Hall Graves conducted ballroom dancing classes, also upstairs. Simmons Hardware occupied the building between 1962 and 1996. Since 1998, several restaurants have operated in the building. One of the restaurants was Murphy's Place, named for an alleged ghost, Murphy, that's said to make appearances. It's been the home of ribeyes since 2012. In 1905, George Hood, a Goldsboro attorney, had the Opera House built. For years, it was called the Hood Building. We're standing in the former location of the Opera House. The two-story patent stone building hosted traveling shows, plays, musical entertainments, school graduations, and a senior high school productions. The upstairs had a large auditorium, which featured silent movies. In the 1940s, the first floor was used by S.L. Warren for his produce office and Faison Witherington for his insurance office. Mr. Witherington was also the secretary treasurer of the Mount Olive Pickle Company, so he also used the office for pickle company business. On the James Street side of the building, Magnus Connor operated his dry cleaning. For years, Mrs. Robert Jesse Sutherland managed the Opera House. In 1947, the Opera House was replaced by the Center Theater. It was a brick and concrete cinema with an art deco facade. Its first movie was Fiesta. The owner was Harry C. Cook, who also owned the Wayne Theater, located further down the street. In 1951, movie admission prices were 62 cents for afternoon matinees and 83 cents for the nighttime showing. In 1952, this theater showed Mount Olive's first X-rated movie. In the movie, a woman delivers a dead child and showed the childbirth. As a result of the graphic nature, the patrons were separated by gender. The 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. showings were for women only, and the 9 o'clock showing was for men only. Another interesting fact is that a cot was placed in the lobby for anyone who fainted during the movie. The theater was closed in 1972, in 1996, Hurricane Fran damaged the sign and it was eventually removed. In 1905, the Gladys Hotel was built on this site. It burned before it was ever opened. In 1908, the Citizens Bank was built and was in operation until 1933. It closed due to the Great Depression. An interesting side note is that everyone got paid in Mount Olive that was owed money. It became the site of Raymond's Cafe, then Reeves Cafe for many years, and finally Brewer Insurance Services. The bronze marker was placed in 1932 here to indicate height above sea level. We're in front of Brill's Bar Room. It was operated by Billy Brill as early as 1873. There's an original tin ceiling in this building, festooned with voluptuous women, which serves as a reminder that it once was a bar room. In 1874, David John Aaron purchased the business. For years, it was known as Aaron's Store, and by 1889, it had evolved into Aaron's Pharmacy. The beautiful brass bar rail that had survived through the years was sold for scrap during World War II. A descendant, Lipman Long, said that he should have been shot for that sale. In 
1882, B.H. Hatch operated this business. Between the late 1800s and 1905, the store burned three times during town fires. We're standing on Center Street. It divides the town east and west. Most of this street was sold by Adam Wynn in 1838 to the Wilmington and Raleigh Railroad for $19. The land extended from the southern end of our village to about Journey Street. The deed granted the railroad a 130-foot right-of-way that extends to these storefronts on both sides of the tracks. This sale made it possible for the development of Mount Olive. The Bank of Mount Olive opened in 1901 on South Center Street with $10,000. Pete Brazil was the cashier. The bank moved to North Center Street in 1964 and changed its name to Southern Bank in 1967. In 2020, the bank had 60 employees and 65 branches in eastern North Carolina and Virginia. This is the D.O. Thompson Building, which now houses the apartment building, Miller's Crossing. From the 1910s to the 1920s, downstairs was a movie theater for silent movies. The upstairs was used as several things, a dance hall, skating rink, and meeting rooms. The Mount Olive Rotary Club met here in the early 1920s. The building was owned and operated by Minnie Carnegie, wife of William Carnegie. Their house was across the street and also their stable that housed Ben, the town's fire horse. Between the late 1920s and the mid-50s, D.O. Thompson operated a grocery store in the building. The store was later Thompson and Francis Supermarket when Thompson's son-in-law, James Francis, became a partner. This beautiful Queen Anne was built in 1900 and was occupied by Dr. Leonard Aaron, son of David John Aaron. David lived in Mount Olive between 1881 and 1910 and published the town's first newspaper called The Telegram. You may remember him as he also owned Aaron's Pharmacy that we visited earlier. He was our first resident to be elected to the North Carolina General Assembly. In 2001, when the house was being considered for demolition, the Mount Olive Area Historical Society secured a 99-year lease. The museum opened in 2007 as a subsidiary of the Historical Society. It's staffed by volunteers and is open the second Sunday of each month and by appointment. The former town hall was built in 1908 for $6,000 and was located just behind us at the David John Aaron Teaching Museum. It was a three-story brick building that's been described as our town's first skyscraper. The first floor housed the fire department, the jail, town offices, and a fish market. The Charter of Incorporation for Mount Olive provided for five town commissioners who were to select a magistrate or mayor. William Broadhurst was chosen as our first mayor. The second floor was the mayor's office and also the spot where the town board of commissioners met. Later it was used for the Wayne County Health Clinic and then a driver's license office. The third floor was rented out to organizations. For years the Mount Olive chapter of the Masonic Lodge met here. Also in 1911 the Mount Olive Methodist Church used the third floor for two years while their church was being built. The former town hall building was demolished in 1974. This historic home is called the Oaks, named for the large number of oak trees that were planted here. It was built in 1860 by Willis Cherry, a Duplin County native. In 1865, this house was used as an officer's quarters during the Civil War and also a hospital facility for the Union troops encamped in Mount Olive after the Battle of Bentonville. In 1875, James Francis Oliver purchased the house and it stayed in the Oliver family until 1970. The current owner is Bobby Herring. This lovely Italianate home was built in 1890 for Elizabeth Flowers. If you remember, it was the Wynn family that sold the land to the railroad in 1838 that led to the development of the town. 
A strong tradition says the Wynn's 1840s cabin was incorporated into this house as a kitchen, making this the oldest structure in Mount Olive. Governors Charles B. Aycock and John Erringhouse were entertained in this home. This is the home of Bill's Barbershop. Barbershops have occupied this building for a hundred years. This building's been a doctor's office for more than a hundred years when Dr. Henderson opened his clinic in 1914. It began with Dr. Henderson, later came Dr. Lowndes, then Dr. Lambert, and now is part of the Goshen Medical Practice. The War Memorial was built in 1920 and sponsored by the Mount Olive Women's Club in honor of our World War I veterans. It was originally located in front of the Flowers Wooten Holmes House and relocated to this site in the middle of the 100 block on North Center Street in 1978. As you can see on the street side, the water fountain is for the mules and the horses, but on the sidewalk side is for people. It's very practical. We're standing in front of what would have been the town's hospital upstairs. Between 1908 and 1913, two doctors, Dr. Lemuel Carnegie and Clarence Maxwell, worked here until 1913 when it closed and they left town. During the 1800s, West Main Street was a horse racing track where jousting turned man who won was the king of the tournament and that night he chose a queen at the ball that was held later on. This Greek revival home has a long history in Mount Olive. It was built in 1870 for Robert Jesse Sutherland who was one of the first five commissioners of Mount Olive. In the late 1880s, the house was visited by the Reverend Joseph Wilson, who was the father of the future president, Woodrow Wilson. Also, it's said that a governor's speech was given from this very balcony. Later, it housed Tyndall Funeral Home. The Mount Olive Housing Authority has used it for years, and in 2015, the town spent $50,000 to renovate the house and saved it from demolition. Steele Memorial Library was named for William Calvin Steele, who was a physician here between 1895 and 1933. Dr. Steele was a strong advocate for a library in our town. The library was housed originally in Dr. Steele's former home. In 2014, the library officially opened in this location. It sits on the site of where Dr. Steele made his home. We hope that you enjoyed our historical downtown tour. Maybe the next time you walk these streets, you might think you hear the bell tolling at Summerlin Blacksmith Shop. It tolled every day at noon. Or maybe you might think you see Dr. Steele driving by in one of the town's first new automobiles. In any case, we hope to see you very soon. If you'd like to come to Mount Olive and do the tour yourself, we have pamphlets with the route and addresses. You can pick those up at the library or at the Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce. Hope you enjoyed it.